Here's a little glimpse of what engineers do. But before we can use CAD, run analysis, and design parts, we must start from the beginning. Here's everything you need to know to get started with mechanical engineering. You can do this with any school and program you're interested in. Just look up the plan of study and see what coursework is needed. Now with that being said, I want to share my college's program and give you a roadmap and point you in your direction. Now let's look at Charlotte's ME plan of study. I won't be covering the general classes you have to take such as economics, general studies, and so on. Just know along with your engineering material, you'll have to take these classes. You'll see that there are many prerequisites to advance and the cycle continues. It starts off with Calculus 1, and if you didn't place in Calculus as a freshman, it's not the end of the world. You'll just have to take, again, prerequisites that will allow you to take Calculus in the following semester. The foundation of your ME career needs to be laid. You need Calculus, Chemistry, Physics, and Writing. And I know it may not make sense of why you need these, but trust me, you do. For example, Thermodynamics relies on Chemistry, Calculus, and Physics. Uh, solid relies on calculus and physics and if you break down each engineering course to their fundamentals it all stems from calculus chemistry and physics writing is also crucial being able to convey your message in a technical and analytical way is very important i use writing every day now i may not be writing technical reports like i used to but i still need to communicate with my colleagues about technical items in an easy to understand fashion like one of my professors said everyone's a salesman if you can't convey your message in a meaningful way your ideas can't be sold Therefore, writing and communication being soft skills are very important in our day to day and I'm still sharpening those skills today. Along with your base foundation classes, you have Intro to Engineering 1 your first semester. You'll be placed in a team with other engineering majors besides mechanical. You'll be given basic problems to solve such as Ohm's Law, uh, V equals IR, voltage equals current times resistance, and you'll be writing a lot. I wrote more in this class than I did in my normal English classes. It's a different type of writing though. In your English classes, you're writing argumentative and fictional papers, and you're given a decent amount of time to write these papers. But in your intro to engineering, you're writing more technical papers, and you must back up your statements with analysis and cite everything you use in a short amount of time while juggling multiple assignments for the same class. Intro to Engineering 2 is where you branch off into your discipline, uh, mechanical, civil, electrical, and from here on out, your engineering classes are discipline-based. In Intro to Engineering 2, you learn more about the design phase of mechanical engineering and use CAD, computer aid design softwares. Um, in, engineering, in Intro to Engineering 2, we designed this little air engine in Creo Parametric, and in sophomore design, we machined this. So at Charlotte, mechanical engineers primarily use Creo Parametrics and SolidWorks. And just to give you some insight, companies use these CAD programs. Uh, you're able to use these CAD programs offered at the university to sharpen your skills and so by the time you graduate you'll be good at modeling and be a potential candidate for the company who wants a proficient engineer in their preferred CAD software. Though once you learn one software, most CAD programs are similar and you can maneuver your way around one another. On to year two. Physics two is mainly electrical and just a heads up, you'll need to understand basic electrical engineering as a mechanical engineer because nowadays nothing is purely mechanical. Most engineering systems have an electrical component to it in some way or another, and you need to come to the reality of this and learn, and learn electrical fundamentals willingly. Alongside Physics 2, you also have differential equations which deals with Laplace transforms, which is an integral transformation of a real variable to a function of a complex variable. This is important for spring mass damper systems such as your suspension system in your car and you'll, you'll use differential equations later in dynamics too. Now for your first ME course, the valuable statics. By far the bread and butter of any engineer. Now statics deals with systems that are rigid and at equilibrium. You'll learn how systems have free body diagrams and use these diagrams to solve reaction forces to determine your sum of forces and moments within that system. Manufacturing systems is a great class. It teaches you all the ways products can be manufactured. You definitely need to know how products can be created and what's the easiest way to accomplish this. You can create an elegant product, but if it can't be manufactured at a cost-effective price, the design can't be implemented. You will learn about machining, casting, plastic injection, and so on, and also learn some engineering economics, which is useful. Speaking of design, sophomore design is where you're put back into a team to design a project. You can choose from a list that's provided, and this project is all theoretical. From this team project, you'll run simple calculations to make sure your design will theoretically work and some CAD design to show how your project works. Along with the in-class portion of sophomore design, you'll be making the little air engine that I showed in the machine shop to get some hands-on machining experience. Now looking back at Charlotte's mechanical engineering program, the classes they teach go hand-in-hand -hand together because 
um, manufacturing systems and software design are co-requisites. So while you're learning about the machining process, you're machining a little air engine. Now remember when I said you'll have to understand some electrical engineering? Well, you must take a dedicated electrical engineering course. This class is basically a scaled down and summarized version of the full electrical engineering program. It's intense along with the lab portion. In the lab, you'll make circuits and run voltage and current through breadboards and make sure your circuits match the theoretical ones in lecture. A computational method that deals with solving engineering analysis while using an automated software, uh, MATLAB, to run your systems. This is where you make some useful coding to solve simple to complex equations that converge to a solution. <laughs> you'll learn second order polynomials, open and closed methods, and Gasset methods to name a few scripts you'll be taught. On to year three. Now this is where the fun begins because you're taking higher level engineering courses such as thermodynamics, dynamic systems, strength of materials, instrumentations, along with junior design. Thermodynamics deals with the first and second law of thermodynamics. This class will teach you how energy is transferred from one body to the next and will show you that energy is conserved. Thermodynamics is all around us from your car's engine to your refrigerator and this class will give you a better understanding on how these systems work. Dynamic systems, one, recalls back to physics with projectile motion and rigid bodies and solids, but now these rigid bodies are no longer in equilibrium, you'll use the fundamentals you learn in statics on top of work energy and conservation laws to determine new resultant forces. Engineering materials. Oh man, this one, this one's tough. Uh, for me at least, because we're looking at the microstructure of materials, so steel, aluminum, even precious metals like gold and silver, and chemistry was a while ago in respect to this class. We're looking at crystal structures or lattices such as BCC, body-centered cubic FCC, face-centered cubic HCP, hexagonal closed pact, and I could not tell you anything about this now. I'd have to do my research and just recall everything that we learned. But just know that strength of materials is that of itself, the strength of material. Instrumentation is all about instruments, um, not the ones we used in band, but the ones we used to record data, such as accelerometers and temperature gauges, strain gauges, and, and so on. Uh, you'll learn how signals are transmitted and delivered to one another. And along the class, you have another lab portion of it. And in this lab, you build uh, instrumentation experiments, again, with more writing and lab reports. Junior design. This was the class that finally made everything click for me. Each junior design professor had a different project. So for myself and my team, we had to design and fabricate a pick and place robot. And at its simplest form, this robot was a cantilever beam that was actuated by stepper and silver motors that was controlled by an Arduino. We ran solid equations to make sure the robot wouldn't fail, spec'd out the motors and drive system. Then we 3D printed and machined the robot parts. Once everything was assembled, we tested and we finished the class. I remember the night before the competition, we were in a classroom debugging our Arduino code all night. Uh, we basically got one hour of sleep at 7 a.m., woke up, did the competition the next hour at 8. So I will always remember that and treasure that moment. <laughs> Dynamics 2 uses differential equations to solve first and second responses. You model mechanical, electrical, and thermal systems using the same principles throughout the course and you learn how to manipulate this system to get an outcome that you're looking for. Thermodynamics 2 takes the material you learned from Thermo 1 and elaborates on non-ideal Rankine power cycles with reheat and regeneration and ideal air standard auto and diesel cycles, just to name a few topics. And here's where chemistry comes back into play, so I hope you remember that. Intro to heat transfer. Now I believe Charlotte changed the curriculum, making this class um, not a requirement anymore, but double check that, do, like to do your own research. But for me, when I was going through there, this class hurt a lot of people, um, myself included. But after Charlotte changed the curriculum, I think it was my last semester, yeah, um, a lot of students passed, including myself. Uh, the material itself wasn't difficult. I, I actually enjoyed learning about conduction, convection, and radiation heat transfer. You'll determine cooling on fins, so air-cooled engines, for example, there are grooves in the engine for cooling. Um, there is a maximum distance and thickness that will yield the most efficiency given that engine's parameters, and so anything past this length or thickness is wasted material and additional cost. Fluid mechanics is a fun class. You'll learn about laminar and turbulent flow, fluid statics, conservation principles, and Bernoulli's equations, just to state a few. Uh, in this class, you'll also learn about planes and how they produce uh, lift with their wings, and cars and how they produce downforce with their wings. And so speaking of cars, if you're interested in increasing your car's performance, you can increase the horsepower or you can decrease your drag 
You'll find that aerodynamics plays a large role in your vehicle's performance because as you increase your velocity, you're increasing your drag. From the drag equation, velocity is exponentially increased, meaning velocity is always fighting against you. You're using more energy, more power to overcome that drag force, whereas if you decrease your coefficient of drag, you can decrease your overall drag force. Thermofluids lab allows you to run experiments involving fluids. Uh, you'll take everything you learn from fluid mechanics and uh, heat transfer and apply these concepts to your experiments. And again, more lab write-ups and more papers. Now onto senior year. You'll be taking senior design one, math electives, your mechanical engineering electives and professional development. Here's where you can pick the classes that interest you, but they must be offered that semester. So Charlotte doesn't always offer the same engineering electives. Um, so you just have to be cautious of that and look at what's offered that semester. So for myself, I took automotive power plants, which is an awesome class if you can take that. Um, I highly recommend it. I also took applied vehicle aerodynamics, road vehicle dynamics, and advanced CAD CAM. I got my motorsports concentration, so that's why my electives were uh, automotive based. Scene design is split into two semesters, so fall and spring, or spring and fall if you're a semester behind. You can choose your top picks from a long list of projects. And these senior design projects are typically multidiscipline, meaning you'll be working with electrical, computer, mechanical, mechanical tech, systems. It just depends on your project. Uh, now, these projects are also funded by the school and by real companies. Companies assign the team a task and you have two semesters to develop a solution. Typically, your first semester is design and preliminary prototyping and your second semester is prototyping, testing and final release. And along the way, you'll get guidance from your faculty, uh, mentors, and your industry mentors. And Charlotte does a great job at mimicking the real world and contracting out engineering teams to solve a company's task. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any other colleges that do this. So looking at NC State, I see that they only require one semester of senior design, but yeah, you know, that's, that's NC State. And just if anyone's curious, NC State and UNC Charlotte are both ABET accredited, so both degrees are weighted the same. It's just the name of the school. Now, along with senior design, you should lessen your workload. This is not the time to fail uh, because it still happens. But by now, you should know your workload capabilities and juggle the remaining classes with your senior design one and two the following semester. After everything is complete, <laughs> you've made it and you're now degreed ME, uh, but the learning does not stop. Engineering is a way of life and you'll continue to sharpen your skills and grow as a person. So just because you finished this trek doesn't mean you just stop. Continue to strive for more and be the best engineer you can. Everything I share can be researched and learned on your own. That's the beauty of the internet. Just look up the plan of study, um, see the coursework needed. For example, thermodynamics. If you want to learn more about thermodynamics before paying tuition, before going to college, just to see if it's a good fit for you, look up the lectures, look up the courses online. All this material is readily available for you and it's free. Everything from calculus to thermo to dynamics, all of it is free. See if it's a good fit for you before you go and spend your money on tuition and go and waste your time on something that you don't wanna do. And that's with anything. That's with any uh, curriculum, any plan of study. Look up the courses required, do the research, do your due diligence to see if that's something you wanna do. And if it is, hey, spend the money, go to university, get the training. And then I promise you, if you go for engineering, it is worth it in the end. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're interested in engineering or college or know somebody who might be, stay tuned because I have some content that may help you or help them before the fall of 2021 semester begins. So subscribe to stay up to date, like and share if you found this video useful or helpful. Uh, I thank you for watching. Until next time, we'll see you.